Hello, welcome to video 56 in the lecture Advanced Mathematic Modeling. In the last video we looked a bit at scaling. So we had object and we objects and we increased the scale of objects and then we looked what certain properties are doing. Um, we looked, uh, saw that certain proper properties like the volume or weight scale as the size to power of 3. Surface scales as the power square uh, size squared. And then we are many uh, properties then depend on the ratio of volume to surface to volume, and then we obtain uh, uh, power laws. Uh, for example, the strength uh, of a weightlifter in the Olympic ga uh, Games scales as his body weight to power uh, body weight to power two over three. And in this video. I want to look a little bit more uh, at scaling in biology. So first of all, there's uh, we should maybe uh, look a bit. What is the geometry doing when we scale something? So and then we should distinguish between isometric scaling. Metric scaling means that uh, a little bit like like the example we had here with the small house, that all axes are scaled in the same proportion. So the ratios of the geometry stay the same. So this comes from ISO Greek means the same. So all meaning all proportions or all axes are scaled in the same way. And that means that proportions, geometric proportions Stay constant. Hmm? So that's just we have uh, if we have different objects which are scaled isometrically, one object is just a large, larger version of the smaller one, and all proportions are the same. And in contrast, there is allometric scaling. Allo comes from Greek different and so allometric scaling means that uh, axes, different axes are scaled differently And the result is that the geometric proportions are uh, change. This means then, and uh, this something such an allometric scaling is seen quite often in biology. Uh, when when the morphology changes with body size, and I mean we have seen this uh, with uh, big animals which need to have thicker legs to to carry the weight. So a big elephant is not a precisely geometrically scaled mouse because uh, due to the difference in the, in the increase of weight and the increase of strength, so the larger element needs bigger legs in order to support the weight. And um, 
this is seen in many different contexts. Um, so very often in biology we have to deal with allometric scaling. To give you an example, we take the fiddler crab. And now I try to make a painting of a small and a large crab. Okay, so let's see. So we make a small crab. So it looks like this. Maybe here is so has this carapax and then has some legs here. Actually I don't remember. Does it have four or three legs? I don't know. And then okay. So that's our small crab. And then here it has these things. So that's the small and now when we look at the large crab so that's the young one that we look the ad adult one okay so the large crab everything a bit larger and this looks still isometrically scaled so far this is an isometrically scaled version so just a larger version of the small crab and uh, but then here this part here says the same size but here on the left um, the claw the right claw is now extremely extended so it has a very big right claw so in adult the right claw uh, grows faster than body size mm? and so this means like the proportions of the organism don't scale, stay constant during growth. So this is not an isometric scaling or only parts of the body scale isometrically, whereas the claw scales allometric. So that's an example here in the fiddler crab. And uh, we have this also, for example, in humans. When we look at human, uh, a baby, and uh, okay it's a sketch right so we have a baby has a big head body and legs so that would be the baby which has a rather big uh, head and if you take now the adult and the adult in compare <laughs> oh, sorry I cannot kind of paint but the adult in comparison has a much smaller head compared to the baby so uh, when you scale a human during development of growth from a young from a child to, to an adult mm, the proportion of the size of the head compared to the rest of the body uh, changes and in fact if you would see a baby human baby the size of, of an adult this would look rather scary so that's a baby and that's here the adult and we can express this more more graphically of course we want then so in human development sorry it's a bit uh, yeah maybe one can still read it so we want to, to uh, visualize this graphically so we can make a graph and then we have here the log of body size and here we take the log of the size of an organ and for example if we take the heart and then we see the heart 
nearly scales isometrically. So if we have here the diagonal and this here is the size of a human heart for humans of different body size. So you see for larger <coughs> individual it has a larger heart and only for very large individuals we see a small decay. But if you look at the size of a brain, yeah, and then we see, and the brain determines then the size of the head, we see we have a different, so the baby comes already with a very big brain, and this is increasing not so much during the development to an adult. And so you see that the proportions change. Yes, yeah, so the, the the body, the the head or the brain weight, brain size does not scale proportionally to the body size. And something like this is called allometric scaling. But uh, it doesn't mean that that you have everywhere uh, allometric, meaning non-isometric scaling in biology. There's also uh, many examples where we observe isometric scaling and uh, for example in our group we once looked at uh, unicellular phytoplankton Then you see phytoplankton comes in all kinds of shapes. So phytoplankton is really huge, huge diverse taxonomic group, and uh, you, you you find phytoplankton which look a little bit like spheres. You find phytoplankton which are very elongated, which look a little bit like this, and you find phytoplankton which looks more like like cubes, and and phytoplankton which look a little bit more like like like. Uh, cones and so on and so forth. So phytoplankton comes in a lot of different shapes. Um, and we made a plot where we plotted from a sample, from a marine sample, the volume. So in micrometers, so the volume of phytoplankton cell. And here we plotted the surface. of the phytoplankton in micrometer squared and uh, so the volume comes here from 10 to 0 to 10 to 8 so you have 8 orders of magnitude changes in volume from the smallest uh, phytoplankton cells, the small uh, Proglovococcus, and then this is very small cyanobacteria to very large uh, phytoplankton cells. And also in the surface we have a change from 10 to 1 to 10 to 6, so 6 orders of magnitude. And when we plot then for every, now we, we so you can take data which is uh, measured in the so samples from the ocean. With microscopy you can obtain the geometry and then when you have the size and the geometry you can calculate the surface. And then just uh, for, for, and then you need to measure, for example, for, s for these things here, what is the geometry, what is the size of the longest axis, the size of the smallest axis and so on. And then you take such an, uh, uh, a phytoplankton, you look at the, at the volume you look at the surface and you make a point. Then you take another one, you look at the volume and the surface and you do this for a huge sample and uh, one basically sees that the points here follow very precisely the power law. So we found that the surface increases as the volume to 0.68 and that's very good approximation for volume to 
power 2 over 3. Yeah. So this means if the typical size the surface of a phytoplankton cell, uh, cell goes as the volume to uh, 2 power 2 over 3, this means uh, cell dimensions scale isometrically. with volume. So we find the power law, but since this exponent is 2 over 3, so that's the exponent you would expect from normal geometry if you scale all axes in a similar way. This means in the sample when we find small phytoplankton, we find larger versions where all axes are scaled similarly. So we, so we have no uh, typical shape elongation w with size. Because there were speculations that maybe larger phytoplankton cells would tend to become more longish and, and, and you can really have very long thin needle kind of phytoplankton and there was uh, an idea maybe with increasing body size there's a tendency to become more like a needle but this is not the case because uh, we have here this power law and this with this exponent this is not possible but what we found is when you look here at the scatter we saw a larger scatter of the curve um, for middle size uh, volumes whereas at the ends for very small and very large sizes the points were more close together and um, when we looked at um, okay can we measure this so we get made another plot and plot it again where is the volume in micrometer power 3 10 to 0 10 to 8 and now we made here uh, something like like uh, um, yeah, you, they, we have different measures of, of, of elongation for example we could measure the surface extension the aspect ratio so some measure of the geometry surface extension tells us how big is the surface of this cell compared to a cell which has a similar volume and aspect ratio gives us the longest dimension L1 divided by the smallest dimension L2 and this gives us a measure also how how longish such a shape is and there indeed what we found is um, a cloud of points so basically we can have uh, cells which have a very uh, high aspect ratio we, we can find our needles here and we find points here so that's perfect um, that would be perfect cubes or spheres you know where all axes are the same and then we find a cloud of points but interestingly these points were in such, an, such a range so meaning we found that we that um, the very small and very large cells very small and large cells they tend to be contact compact mm, because they have very small surface extension or aspect ratio whereas cells of intermediate size So 
cells here in the middle, they can have all kinds of shape. Which tells us uh, that sometimes only looking for power laws is not uh, the end of all things. Sometimes you look, have to look a bit more carefully and look um, at different shapes and geometries and then look at the distribution of, of these. And um, this with this I can I want to show you also that that um, so this is actually a, a, a research topic that's developing rather fast because we get more and more data about, for example, microorganisms about their shapes, their numbers, their sizes, and then we can start to make histograms, distributions, and start to plot one variable against another and learn some characteristic rules about the so like the physiological constraints in the, in, in, in the body size and in, in the shapes of organisms. And, um, and this is in the moment only the data analysis wh where you just take such data and try to, to plot this and try to find patterns. What is still open is uh, are the questions for this so you know basically something is usually optimized in evolution so why do shapes like this do not appear why don't we have very small cells which are needles or very large ones hmm? why do we have this um, isometric scaling why don't we not find this shape elongation and then of course now can tr try now to make models uh, and then uh, for example you could try to, to think what is the uh, like, like uh, the, the uptake of nutrients could depend on the surface other processes could depend on the volume of cells and then um, the surface volume and then you uh, could try to make some mechanistic models to, to, to predict these kind of things yeah that's um, all I want to say about this geometric scaling of organisms and now in the next video I want to come to something very surprising when we look at uh, metabolic scaling but for the moment thank you